Hello and welcome to Raju Notes channel, your pit stop for weekly current affairs updates. The updates tailor made for students taking all kinds of competitive exams like UPSC, civils, defense and placement interviews. Please subscribe to the channel and stay updated every Sunday. As the economic crisis in Sri Lanka escalates, thousands of protesters on Saturday stormed the presidential palace in Colombo and made themselves home, enjoying the luxuries reserved for the president and his family. The protesters were seen taking dip in the swimming pool, working out in the presidential gym and going on the foot in the president's kitchen. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksha, meanwhile, was forced to flee amid the escalating violence and demand for his resignation. Much of the popular anger for the economic crisis has been directed at President Gotabaya Rajapaksha and his brother Mahinda, who he appointed to be Prime Minister. President Rajapaksha has been criticized for big tax cuts he introduced in 2019. When Sri Lanka's foreign currency shortage became a serious problem in early 2021, the government tried to limit them by banning imports of chemical fertilizers. It told farmers to use locally sourced organic fertilizers instead. This led to widespread crop failure. Sri Lanka had to supplement its food stocks from abroad, which made its foreign currency shortage even worse. More so, even when the power gets into the head of people, they lose sight of the people, can overturn their fates overnight. This exactly seems to have happened with the Rajapaksha family. But the question is, how will Sri Lanka come out of this situation? Meanwhile, Sri Lankan Army Chief Shivendra Silva said that the opportunity to resolve the current political crisis in a peaceful manner is now available. India has extended an unprecedented support of over 3.8 billion US dollars this year itself for ameliorating the serious economic situation in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka has now declared a state of emergency. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky dismissed Kiev's ambassador to Germany on Saturday as well as several other top foreign envoys. In a decree that gave no reason for the move, he announced the sacking of Ukrainian ambassadors to Germany, India, Czech Republic, Norway and Hungary. It was not immediately clear if the envoys would be handed new jobs. Ukraine's ambassador to India, Igor Polikha, was relieved of his post. Polikha has been known as one of the most senior European diplomats with extensive experience in India's relationship with Eastern Europe. Let's wait for the repercussions of this decision. The city of Shanghai has discovered a COVID-19 case involving a new sub-variant of Omicron BA 5.2.1, signaling the complications China faces to keep up with the new mutations as it pursues its zero-COVID policy. The case found in the financial district of Pudgong on July 8 was linked to the case from overseas, says Zhao Dandan, vice chair director of the city's health commission. Shanghai in eastern China emerged from the lockdown lasting around two months at the start of June. But it has continued to impose tough restrictions, locking down buildings and compound so soon as new potential transmission chain emerges. After a small pause, the COVID cases in India are also on a rise along with first case of monkeypox. So I think it's a time so we start wearing the mask once again. India has won its first medal at the World Games of 2022 being held at Birmingham, USA with the archer duo of Jyoti Shekhar Venam and Abhishek Varma bagging a bronze medal in archery, bringing home the country's first ever medal in the discipline by defeating Canada's Andrea and Miguel. With this, they have also won India's fifth overall medal in the World Game. They defeated the duo of Bereka and Miguel by margin of 157 and 156. The 11th edition of the World Games is taking place in Birmingham, Alabama, USA from 7 to 17th of July 2022. This edition, originally planned for 2021, was postponed to 2022 because of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The first indigenously made sea-going aircraft carrier, the Vikrant, is set to be commissioned into the Indian Navy next month. The fourth phase and the last phase of the sea trial for the Vikrant has been successfully completed on Sunday. The warship conducted integrated trials of equipment and systems on board, including some of the aviation functions on the board its deck.
The first trial was successfully completed in August last, followed by the second and the third phase trials in October 2021 and January 2022 respectively. The warship's endurance testing of propulsion machinery, electrical and electronic warfare suits, deck machinery, life-saving applications, navigation and communication systems have been tried out at the sea. The fighter jets that will operate from the deck of the carrier are able to be tested using the Russian MiG-29K jets, but after the warships is handed over to the Navy. The 44,000 ton indigenous aircraft called, so called as the IAC has been made with the state-owned Cochin shipyard at Kochi, Kerala. The commissioning is happening in the backdrop of India-China race off to expand their naval strength. China has two operational aircraft carriers, the Leo Honing and the Shangdong. Last month, it launched another one called as Fujian that would take some three years for commissioning. India has one operational aircraft carrier that is INS Vikramaditya purchased from Russia and the upcoming Vikrant. The plan for the third carrier is so far not okayed by the government. Besides, India and China, Japan and South Korea are adding carriers to their fleets as Asian countries race towards a projected power at the sea. The legislation for privatization of public sector banks, which is considered to be in offing for past few months, could be introduced in the upcoming monsoon session of the parliament. Both the Houses of Parliament will convene for the monsoon session from July 18th and are scheduled to continue following till August 13th. The government is awaiting the views on proposed PSB privatization bill from the Union Law Ministry before tabling it in the Parliament. The Law Ministry is studying the proposed banking law amendments with respect to privatization and added that the government may lower the minimum stake of PSBs from 51% at present to 26%. The Reserve Bank of India on 11th July unveiled a rupee settlement system for international trade, aiming to promote growth of the global trade with emphasis on exports from India and to support the increasing interest of global trading community in India, Indian rupee. According to the new system, banks will need to seek prior approval to use. The new order takes immediate effect, RBI said. Exporters and importers can now use special Vostro accounts linked to the correspondent bank of the partner company for receipts and payments denominated in rupees. Among other details, the RBI said that all exports and imports under the invoicing arrangements may be denominated and invoiced in rupee, while exchange rate between the currencies of the two trading partner countries may be market determined. Apart from this, the Apex Bank said that the special Vostro accounts can be used for payments for projects and investments, imports or exports, advanced flow of management and investment in government treasury bills, subject to Foreign Exchange Management Act of 1999. In shooting, India's Arjun Babutwa has won first gold medal at the International Shooting Federation I. SSF World Cup stage at Changwong in South Korea. He defeated Tokyo's 2020 silver medalist Lukas Kozenaiski of the USA for 79 in the finals. Arjun Babuta has qualified second to make it to the eight-man ranking bound behind Sergey Richer. This was India's first medal under the new national foreign rifle coach Thomas Farnek. The euro sank on Tuesday to reach parity with US dollar for first time in 20 years. The currency fell to an intraday low of $1 amid concerns that an energy crisis could plunge the region's economy into recession. The eurozone has been in a constant decline as fears of recession there intensify on the back of rising uncertainty about the energy supplies to the bloc, with Russia threatening to further reduce gas supplies to Germany and the border continents. Meanwhile, the Indian rupee also hit a historic low of 79.57 against the US dollar during early trade on Tuesday. The National Testing Agency NTA has released the CUET Common University Entrance Test Admit Cards for 2022 in online mode. The students can download it from their official website cuet.samarth.ac.in. The CUET UG examination will be held in two phases. As per the reports, the CUET UG Phase 1 is scheduled to take place from July 15 to 20 
and phase 2 will be from August 4th to August 10, 2022. The CUAT exam 2022 will be held on a computer-based mode. The exam 2022 will be conducted at 500 cities across India and 10 cities outside India. We had discussed this topic in detail about two months back. If you missed it, please see the update on my channel. Croatia will become the 20th country to join the Eurozone on January 1, 2023. European Union Finance Minister has given Croatia the final approval to adopt Euro as a single currency on January 1, 2023, replacing the Croatian Kuna. It is the first expansion of the currency bloc in almost 8 years just as the euro has dropped to its lowest level against the US dollar in 20 years. The previous EU country to join the European single currency area was Lithuania in 2015. In the 27-nation European Union, adopting the euro offers economic benefits stemming from the deeper financial ties with the currency blocs, other members and from the European Central Bank Monetary Authority. The bank plans to raise the interest rates for the first time in 11 years this month to tackle record inflation of 8.6%. More tangibly, it means that any of the currency eurozones, 340 million inhabitants who visit Croatia will no longer need to exchange their cash for kuna. The import policy of major paper products has been omitted from free to free to subject to compulsory registration under Paper Importing Monitoring System. A notification to this effect has been issued by DGFT this week. This order shall be applicable on the range of paper products such as newsprint, handmade paper, wallpaper based. Uh, duplicating paper, coated paper, uncoated paper, litho and offset paper, tissue paper, parchment paper, carbon paper, wall paper, envelopes, toilet papers, cartons, account books, labels, bobbins, etc. All imports arriving on or after 1st October 2022 shall be governed by this policy. Paper products like currency paper, bank bonds and the check paper, security printing paper, etc. have been excluded from this policy. The domestic paper industry has been raising issues of dumping of paper products in the domestic markets by the way of under-invoicing, entry of prohibited groups by misdeclaration, rerouting goods through other countries in lieu of trade agreements. A large portion of paper products are imported under others category tariff lines. This move will also go a long way in promoting Make in India and the Atmanirbhar in this category. The dawn of the new era in astronomy has begun as the world gets to look its first full capabilities of NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. A partnership with ESA, that is European Space Agency and CSA, Canadian Space Agency, the telescope's first full color images and the spectroscopic data were released during the televised broadcast on July 12, 2022 from NASA's Gordon Space Phase Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. These listed targets below represents the first wave of full-color scientific images and the spectra that observatory has gathered and the official beginning of the web's general science operations. They were also selected by International Committee of Representatives from NASA, ESA, CSA and the Space Telescope Science Institute. This landscape of mountains and valleys specked with glittering stars is actually the edge of a nearby young star forming region called as NGC 3324 in the Kaira Nebula. Captured in infrared light by NASA's new James Webb Space Telescope, this image reveals for the first time previously invisible areas of the star birth called the Cosmic Cliffs. Webb's seemingly three-dimensional picture looks like a craggy mountains on the moonlit evening. In reality, it is the edge of a giant gaseous cavity within the NGC 3324 and the tallest peaks in the image are about 7 light years high. The carnivorous area has been carved from the nebula by the intense ultraviolet radiation and stellar winds from extensive massive hot young stars located in the center of the bubble above the area shown in this image. Indian naval ship INS Dunagiri, one of the seven stealth frigates that India is constructing under project 17A will be launched into Hooghly River near Kolkata on Friday. Launching is a critically important landmark in building of a warship. It means the ship can float while the rest of the build especially the superstructure is carried out. Like all frigates of project 17A, INS Dunagiri is named after mountain range in the country. 
This began with Project 17, which yielded three frigates, basically INS Shivalik in 2010, INS Satpura in 2011, and INS Sayadri in 2012. Dunagiri is the fourth warship of Project 17A. These highly advanced 66,000 ton graded missile frigates are follow-on vessels of the three frigates projects 17 known as Shivali class. However, project 17A frigates have improved stealth features, advanced weapons, sensor and platform management system. The launch of the fourth ship within such a short span is a testimony to the impetus provided towards self-reliant shipbuilding within the focused approach as per Ministry of Defense. All the project 17A guided missile frigates have been designed in-house by the Indian Navy's Directorate of Naval Design that is DND. The DND has spearheaded the designs of numerous class of indigenous warships in the years gone by. The United Arab Emirates on Thursday announced an investment of 2 billion US dollars to develop a series of integrated food parks across India as part of the efforts by the four nation group called as I2U2 India, Israel, UAE and USA to help tackle food insecurities in South Asia and Middle East. The decision was announced following the virtual summit held by the leaders of the group, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, US Joe Biden, Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid and UAE President Mohammed bin Zayed Al Naya. The I2U2 leaders in a joint statement said, New Delhi will provide appropriate land and the facilities farmers integration into the food parks. The grouping focused on food security crisis and clean energy during their meeting and discussed innovative ways to ensure long-term, more diverse food production and food delivery systems that can better manage global food stocks. The US and Israeli private sectors will be invited to lend their expertise and offer innovative solutions that contribute to the overall sustainability of the project. The I2U2 group will also advance a hybrid renewable energy project in Gujarat consisting of 300 megawatts of wind and solar capacity complemented by the battery of energy solar system. CAA TSA Countering America's Adversaries Through Sanction Act is a tough US law that authorizes the US administration to impose sanction on the countries that purchase major defense hardware from Russia in response to Russia's annexion of Crimea in 2014 and its alleged meddling in 2016 of US presidential elections. The US House of Representatives on Thursday passed a legislative amendment that approves the India's specific waiver for punitive CAA TSA sanctions for its purchase of S-400 missile defense system from Russia. Authored and introduced by Indian-American Congressman Ro Khanna, the amendments urged the Biden administration to use that authority to provide India with the CAA TSA waiver to help deter aggressors like China. The legislative amendment was passed on Thursday by voice vote as part of the en bloc amendment during the floor consideration of the National Defense Authorization Act that is NDAA. The legislation says that the United States Oblique India initiative on the critical and the emerging technologies ICET is a welcome and an essential step to developing closer partnership between the governments, academias and the industries of the two countries to address the latest advances in artificial intelligence, quantum computing, biotechnology, aerospace, semiconductor manufacturing, etc. Such collaborations ensure that the United States and India are well as other democracies around the world, foster innovation and facilitate technological advances which continues to far outpace Russian and the Chinese technology. A dental trend known as turkey teeth that involves traveling abroad to get cut price treatment is leaving hundreds of Britishers with serious complications. According to the BPC, the trend made popular by English media personality Katie Pear Price and ITV's Love Island's Jack Flinch involves filling the teeth to pegs and then replacing them with crowns or veneers. Patients can choose the shape, material, color of these caps. The procedure is viral on TikTok wherein the hashtag turkey teeth has reached more than 130 million views. However, US dentists have warned that the treatment can leave patients with a huge medical bills and serious dental complications. So if you know anyone who is taking a turkey teeth competition challenge, just discourage them. 
Joe Biden has become the first US president to fly directly from Israel to Saudi Arabia. Joe Biden met Saudi Arabia's King Salman and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman soon after arriving in the country. The visit comes as the US attempts to reset its relationship with the country that Biden once pledged to make para on the global stage. Despite his earlier condemnations of the Saudi human rights abuses, Biden now appears ready to re-engage with the kingdom, a key strategic US ally, a major supplier of oil and an avid buyer of weapons. Washington wants the world's largest crude exporter to open the floodgates to bring down the soaring oil prices, which threaten democratic chances in the November midterm elections. Yet, Biden also tried to tramp down expectations that this week's visit to Middle East would yield immediate gains. Remember, India shares better relations with Saudi and recent Prime Minister's visit to that country confirms it. And now for the segment where we look for the events that happened this week back in history. 9th July 2011, South Sudan becomes world's youngest nation. On this day 11 years ago in an atmosphere of tragedy, caution and hope, South Sudan became the world's youngest country breaking away from its long-time rival Sudan. The moment marked the end of decades of fighting between factions in predominantly Christian south of Sudan and their northern Arab rivals in the Sudanese capital Karatom. A decades later, this oil-rich nation is gripped by a worsening humanitarian crisis. South Sudan's second decade may be as troublesome as its first. On this day, 216 years ago, Indian soldiers of Madras Infantry in Velour revolted against the East India Company. Hindu and Muslim soldiers rose together in the name of Tipu Sultan, who had been killed in 1799. The brutal revolt, the first mutiny in India, lasted only one day but cost 450 lives and left behind the rebel battle cry of They are few and we are many. The British responded savagely by blowing away the mutineers with cannons. 12 July 1817, Henry David Thoreau is born. On this date, 205 years ago, Henry David Thoreau was born a pioneer essayist, philosopher and a naturalist. A leading transcendentalist, Thoreau is celebrated for Walden, a book he wrote while living in a jungle cabin, and his essay Civil Disobedience, which argues that the people are morally obliged to challenge the government that holds flagrantly unfair laws. His philosophy of civil disobedience was later put into action by Mahatma Gandhi. 13 July 100 BC, Julius Caesar is born. On this day, 2,121 years ago, Julius Caesar was born. He would go on to change the course of the history of Greco-Roman world decisively and irreversibly. His family name still stands for the ruler who is uniquely supreme Kaiser in German, Tsar in Slavonic language and Kaiser in the Islamic world were inspired by Caesar. His rise was meteoric, his military genius unmatched, his ambition unsatable and his end tragic. In short, Western civilization is his legacy. 14 July 1789, the Bastille prison is stormed. On this day, 233 years ago, angry French citizens stormed the Bastille, a great grand fortress that was infamous for holding political prisoners during the first moments of French Revolution in 1789. In that year, France was amidst a deep economical and political crisis and with an out-of-touch King Louis XVI increasingly unable to manage anti-monarchist forces. The French Revolution raged on and in the end it exchanged an authoritarian regime. For an authoritarian regime, France celebrates 14th as its national day. 15 July 1799, the Rosetta Stone is discovered. On this day, 223 years ago, during Napoleon Bonaparte's Egyptian campaign, a French soldier discovered a black basalt slab inscribed with what seemed to be an ancient writing near the tone of Rosetti. The irregular shaped stone contained fragments of passage written in three different scripts Greek, Egyptian, hierographics, and the Egyptian demotic. It led to the deciphering of a hierographics, thereby opening up of almost all the ancient Egyptian literature to historians. Well, 
that's all friends for this week's update i will see you next sunday on the same channel please help me by subscribing to this channel thank you take care bye bye